now you've got a level 18 Ezreal with a bunch of AP who just starts who just shoots his ultimate at the fountain every time it's up and just farms kills. Yeah, Gang I plank. guess I can see that. Gangplank. Pantheon could do it okay. too, but it'd probably kill him. Yeah, like if you go on YouTube and look up League of Legends Hilarity, a Pantheon does that and aces the whole team. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So yeah, okay, I guess I can see where that is. Um, that's good. Fixed a bug where summoners teleport refreshed your W slots cooldown when you used. That seems that like would it be could beautiful. Be a yeah. <laughs> Disconnected players will now run home if their blue pill is interrupted. That's also very awesome. Oh, that is good. Actually, because I, I, I always thought, like, why doesn't it continuously spam, spam blue pill? Because you get interrupted exactly. once and they just stand there for the rest of the game? Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for the patch notes, Ryth. You got anything you want to add? No, I, you, we guys pretty much covered it all. All right, so let's move on then. Um, what is next? We are going to talk about champs that are free this week. Um, who wants to start off? Go ahead, Ryth. I Okay, um, my champion this week is Zillion. Now, Zillion seems to be free, like, every single week. It's ridiculous. But I hardly ever see people play him correctly. Yeah, people can spam time bombs and rewind, but, I mean, what you really need to do is focus on diffusing enemy Zillion time bombs with your own, since it doesn't do any damage to the people you put them on. So, I mean, why not use what you can? to stop damage to your champions. Like, if you see one of your allies running away about to die with a time bomb on his head, help him out, defuse the bomb. Come on, guys. So, and if, then, so if you put a bomb on someone, it def- it diffuses their bomb? Yeah, and it doesn't do any damage to your champion. That sounds or like a allies. bug, actually, because, like, if you put a bomb on someone, and then you rewind, and you put a bomb on the same person, your initial bomb will detonate. So it's surprising yeah, but, that it doesn't detonate the first bomb. Cool, though. Yeah, it's weird. It's worked for a while now. Like, I do it pretty much every game I play a zillion, and it's ridiculous because you don't see it done enough. Renoa talks about it in her League Top 10 video as well, so I mean, it's been out for a while. Okay, well, I've never heard of that, but that's always good to know. Anything else yeah, you, no, you want to say? Um, be smart with your chrono shift. Try not to use it on yourself. <laughs> yeah. And also, your time Stay warp. Back. Yeah, your time warp can slow people. <laughs> And help yeah, speed I've seen you up. time warp criminally okay, underused. Oh, yeah, yeah. T- well, so. I was just going to say time warp is criminally underused. Like, I've seen people use it on their own teammates all the time, but I barely ever see someone, like, slow an enemy champion to get a kill with it. Yeah, it's very underused. So that's all I got for Zillion, so I guess it's your turn. Mm-hmm. Quill, you want to go or you want me to take it? Um, no, I, well, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. All right. Well, I'm taking Scion this week, so anyone who's watched my videos knows that I play Scion all the time. I prefer to build him AP, uh, basically focusing on his shield and his stun, using Enrage to, like, get ridiculous with the amount of hit points you gain. Um, And if you need to know that much about Scion, you can watch one of my four or five videos on him, but I'll just go over a couple things. I basically like to build him AP. If you don't have a tank on your team, you can build him tank AP, which includes Rylai's, Rod of Ages, probably something like a Banshee's Veil, and beyond that, you can pretty much build whatever. Like, um, what's that stupid ring called? Zanya's. Uh, you can use that, too, to up your AP a lot. And I've just seen so many bad Scions who don't even know. Like, I've seen Scions when I played on my alt account, Let's Play Random, where I was posting the Let's Plays. I've seen Scions who don't even know that you can activate the shield. So, uh, I guess I'll talk about playing against... Yeah, it's horrid. So, I guess I'll talk about playing against Scion. If you see a AP Scion with a blue buff, and you're by yourself, you need to run away, because he will kill you. If he has the blue buff, his stun is on a 4 second cooldown, maybe 5, and it's a 2 second stun flat. It doesn't adjust for how far you are. So, basically, you have 3 seconds to run away every 5 seconds. And that's not including any time where he hits you with his shield and slows you with his Rylai's and stuff like that. So you guys really need to be, I think, just careful about AP Scion if he's been farming correctly. And I think that's about it. Like I said, if you guys want to learn more about Scion, I have hours of footage of him, so you can check that out. (laughs) 
So, my so Quill, you can go up next. Yeah, my champion is going to be Blitzcrank, uh, who, just like uh, you and Scion, I have a fair amount of footage on Blitzcrank. It's who I played quite a bit. I found him... Uh, he was one of the very first characters I fell in love with, and in fact is the reason I initially dropped money on League of Legends, because I wanted this guy unlocked, and he was 6,300 IP, and I was like level 4, and uh, I, he, he'd just been free for a week, and I loved him, and I knew 6,300 IP was going to be too long, so I actually dropped 20 bucks for the collector's pack and got him, and then I played him non-stop until I was level 30, basically. He is really good against people who are not great at dodging his power fist. So he's, hard at, he's really hard at first, because you'll play him a few, uh, few games, and you'll suck at landing the power fist, because skill shots are hard to learn if you're new to the game. Are you talking about the grab? Is that what power fist is oh, called? Oh, sorry. Uh, rocket grab. The rocket My grab? bad. Power fist is, is his, just his punch. Yeah, I do mean rocket okay. grab. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, if you're just starting out in League of Legends, it can be hard to land those skill shots. Uh, you, you end up grabbing minions all the time. But once you get a handful of games under your belt with him, and you start pulling these noobs, they have no idea what's going on. You grab them, then you power fist them to stun them, and then you just explode and disintegrate them, basically. Very, very fun. There's a million different ways of building him. And if you check my videos, you can, you can see some of those examples. But I always, always get a sheen first. Um, just because it makes him hit so, so much harder. He's got a really short cooldown, especially once his power fist gets up in level. You can punch people like every three seconds, I think. And uh, even the rocket grab gets on a fairly short cooldown. And you can tear people up pretty good. I usually build him semi-tanky, but he's not quite as durable as other tanks like Cho'Goth uh, or Alistair and that sort of thing. Those guys are way, way tougher. Um, luckily, as, as Blitz, you don't have to run into the middle of of the enemy. You just pull one person and that's how you yep. initiate fights. Very, very powerful. Yeah, I think Blitz is really good. Um, one thing you were saying, is like when you're a noob, it's really difficult to land the rocket grab. Mm -hmm. And you kind of talked about it, um, but when you're a noob, it's also really hard to dodge the rocket grab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because you don't, <laughs> you don't know where to stand. You're like, what the hell is going on? So, I just wanted to point that out, but beyond that, you did a good good evaluation, but when you're a noob, it's both hard to connect and to dodge that fucking rocket grab. Yep. So, and yeah, item-wise, like I said, just get just get the sheen and get boots of swiftness, and then after that, build them any way you want. You can get a bunch of tank items, uh, you can get a bunch of AP items and then turn the sheen into a Lich Bane, or you can just get a bunch of, like, DPS crit items, basically just turn the sheen into a Trinity Force, and you're in good shape. And I'm gonna let you guys move on to the next section. I actually have to go AFK for two seconds. I'll be right back, though. Oh, no problem. So next up, we're going to be covering items. And this week, Yay. we are going over... Yeah, we are going over <laughs> aura items. So do you have the League Craft page we sent you open? No, oh, yeah. Hold, hold on, let me oh, open it. Wait for it, it wait for it. Okay. That yeah, was minimized. So I'll start, my... I'll start okay, and um, I'm just going to go in alphabetical order. This is what they have. We're, this is um, on LeagueCraft.com. You can go leecraft.com slash items slash aura, and that's what I'm looking at for anyone who wants to follow along. And I'm just going to... St this isn't including all of the things that have, like, activated auras. These are only items that have passive auras. So we might go over active auras in the future or something like that. But anyway, we're going to go over Abyssal Scepter first, which is uh, AP magic resistance. It gives you 70 AP, 57 magic resistance. And it has the unique aura of reducing the magic resist of nearby enemy champions by 20. And I think this is a fantastic item for someone who is going AP, and if even if two out of the five people on your team use mainly magic damage, I think this item is fantastic. Because it, basically, if you're, near, if you're in a team fight, you're reducing the magic resistance of the team by 100. And that's pretty significant, especially if with, against an area of effect spell or something like that. Yeah, it's really um, good. Yeah. Ryth, you want to go over the next one? Yeah, the next one's Aegis of Legion. Uh, it gives you 270, 270 health, 18 armor, and 24 magic resistance. And your aura, it gives you 12 armor and 15 magic resistance, plus 8 damage to nearby allied champions. Now, I haven't personally used this item because I tend to run away from tank melee people, because that's just not me. I'm more of a range, I'm going to do my damage and get the heck out of there so I don't have to stay in this fight kind of thing. So... Do you have anything to say about it? Because I'm not a big melee User guy. Of it? 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've I've used it before. You know, I use it on Shen. I use it on support characters. Sometimes I even get it on Soraka uh, because you just want to stay by the team. I mean, the unique aura, it seems small, but when you, again, when you apply it to five people and you also remember that it's applying to you, so you don't really get 18 armor, 24 magic resistance. You really get 30 armor and almost 40 magic resistance. So... I think it's relatively significant, but it's not like a game breaker. 12 armor yeah. and 15 magic resistance doesn't reduce that much damage. It might reduce, you know, a couple points of damage from spells here and there. But it does add up, I think, in a team fight. Yeah. Um, Emblem of Valor, we're not really going to talk about that because it just builds into the Stark's fervor, and we'll talk about that. Innervating Locket, we kind of already talked about. Um, Quill already ranted. Yeah. And Mana Manipulator is... I mean, everyone should know that. It builds into some other items as well. Soul Shroud. So we'll just talk about Soul Shroud. Soul Shroud is uh, 520 health, and it gives nearby allied champions 12 mana per 5 and 15% reduced cooldown. So I really like the Soul Shroud. I mean, if 3 out of the 5 people on your team use mana, which is actually not... I mean, it's... It's common to have at least one or two champions on your team that don't use mana nowadays. I mean, in between Vlad, Garen, Kat, you know, all those other people who don't use mana. The ninjas, they all use energy. But the 15% reduced cooldowns is just outstanding. And on a tank or a support character, I think the Soul Shout is a very underrated item and very good. Uh, Rise, have you used that at all? Yeah, I have. I tend to get it on my uh, Soraka because I love playing Soraka. I love being the person that keeps my team alive. And it's the 15% cool, reduced cooldown really helps you out because not only do your, does your wish, which is one of your major heals, like get a big re- reduction, but it also allows your damage dealers to put out more damage consecutively. So it's going to pretty much... I, I wouldn't say it would make a breaker team fight, but it's definitely going to lean it more towards your favor. Yeah, it's definitely going to change things up. I mean, cooldowns, like I said earlier, everyone wants their abilities down faster, except for potentially the ninjas. And even then, I mean, so what? You're sitting with no energy. At least your spell is ready to use when you want to use it. Yeah. Um, I'm actually just got back, and I'm happy that I came in right at this time. Soul Shroud is one of my favorite items to get. And yeah, you're right. I think it's underrated, and it doesn't make sense because it's stupendously good. I always get it when I play Janna or even Alistair, who I play as sort of tank support. Very, very good item. Yeah, and it's 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 noticed even more, like you said, when you said Wish. I just thought about that. Like It's especially noticeable on ultimates who have longer than one minute cooldown because you're going to notice a significant reduction in the cooldown. Um, but one yeah. thing I'm not sure about, like, how does it work... If you like run into like nearby someone who just used their ultimate, does it like activate the cooldown and then when you run away, their the cooldown goes back up or what? That's you interesting. Guys, I don't know. Because like I don't know how that works. So I, maybe we should look into that sometime. But I don't know how the cooldown would affect. Like say you know whatever Soraka is standing by someone with a soul shout and she uses wish. Is it going to apply the cooldown instantly, and then even if the person with Soul Shroud walks away, the cooldown has already been applied, or what? I'm totally... I have no idea. If I were designing this, the way I would do it is simply, while you have the buff on you, your cooldowns are cooling down. 15% faster? Yeah, something on my computer just made a bunch of noise. So, sorry about uh, you guys on uh, who are listening to the podcast. The Skype people didn't notice, but you guys will, and my apologies. <laughs> yeah, I, so I'm hoping that while you have the buff in range, your cooldowns are just cooling down 15% faster. And that would be the most logical way of doing it. It would stop you from being abusing it, you know, okay, well, I'll use my ultimate during a team fight while someone is nearby, and then walk away. Um, but at the same time, you're not penalized for not casting your spells in range of that person all the time, all the time. There's exactly. like a period of time that it affects, like maybe when you're in range of it for like, Five seconds before you cast your spell and ten seconds after you cast it. That way you're not running by people and getting the, reduc- the reduction, because that's dumb. Yeah, maybe. Alright, so I think we've talked plenty about Soul Shroud. Um, let's move on to Stark's Fervor. Uh, I got a couple things to say, but then I'll let you two guys take over. 
Um, I think Stark's Fervor is a pretty solid item. 